So I think the right to education provides a great opportunity. It's a new opportunity because now it's a law that the school management committees can actually take a lot of decisions regarding the good functioning of the school. Uh, having said that, I think we have a lot of work to do, we as in you know, anybody involved in education, in actually uh, figuring out firstly you know, what are the things that we want to achieve as a school, what are things that are achievable at the local level, what are things that need system support and align the structure such that the growth or the strengthening of the SNCs can be matched with the capability of the system to be able to fall in line with what the school development plans will be. So for many years we've been a pretty top-down system and now with this you know, this introduction of uh, uh, the possibility that people at the school level can start taking you know, uh, sets of decisions or that they can start demanding what the norms that the law lays down are. So I think work has to be done on all sides, both at the ground level to uh, inform people, to build their capacities, to work effectively together as well as for the system to be able to respond in a way that if you empower a lot of people at the school level and who become very active, how not to disappoint them. So I think it's a game of how do you incrementally build capacities of the system as well as capacity of the committees to together achieve some goals which have been clearly laid out. So for example, if, if it's infrastructure norms, those are all in place. Uh, those are written down, there, there are laws. Uh, but most of the important uh, decision making on who gets what money when cannot be made at the school level. So if I am a school and I have an active committee and I demand that I need a teacher tomorrow, the system has to have some capability of telling me when the teacher will come. So in a way if you look at what schools need, uh, what schools ought to have and there may be things that schools want which are well and above what the norms are how will the financing and the decision making structure actually support these needs to be sort of mapped out. So if I want, for example, I want a room, I want a teacher, these decisions can't be, I can make the demand at the school level, but the supply doesn't come to me automatically and neither do we have a culture of letting people know when these decisions are going to be taken. So I think that, uh, you know, for example, work that uh, we as Pratham have done in some places including Hyderabad indicates that we need, that the, this whole business of strengthening school management committees needs a couple of things. One is very clear goals that you want to achieve. Infrastructure goals are clear, but I think learning goals, there has to be much greater articulation across the system of by which age children should be able to do what and what needs to be done to get there. And also as school committees begin to want things or take decisions, how to follow them up from the system. So both sides, I think there is a great deal of actually hard work that needs to be done. See, again, I think that, uh, uh, again, the right to education could possibly provide a good opportunity because the law says that parents must be informed periodically of children's progress. This means that if I am a you know, mother who is not very educated, then the school or the teacher has to have a way of explaining to me what it is that we are trying to achieve during the school year and coming back to me about how far we've reached. This needs a lot of simplification of vocabulary on all sides. Because right now what we have is two things. One is we do have textbooks. So in the absence of any clear learning goals, it's the textbook has to be covered. But if I am uh, a child who is far below and it is not feasible for a teacher, even a very hard working teacher to bring me up to that level, then between the school and the teacher and the parents, there has to be some conversation which indicates by when will my child reach what level. So a couple of things need to be done. One is I think a very clear, simple articulation, especially at primary school level, eh, about by when will my child be able to do what, done in a way that most people can understand, have to be laid out. Teachers have to be able to say things in that way because even if there is a law or a policy, the people who are interacting with parents are the teachers. Uh, we have to work together as teachers and parents to minimize conflict around these issues because we are very good at blaming each other for difficulties that we are both having together actually. And around this issue of learning goals and how do we achieve them, we will have to build both patience as well as effectiveness in how do we get there. So what will a teacher do if there's a child who's in third standard can't read yet? What will a teacher say to the parent? By when will a child be able to do it? And in return, I think the teacher should expect that at home you will do certain things as well.
I think the role of the parent should be what the role of all parents are. I mean, you are the people who are closest to the child, who have the best interests of the child at heart, and you're the one who's going to guide the child's life as you go on. And so, as uh, you know, the child grows, it's important that the parent grows along with the child to at least, even if you know you're not literate, it doesn't mean that you can't understand what a child needs. I mean, in my own life, for example, my grandmother's never been to school, but she's very clear on where she wanted her children and grandchildren to go because somebody or her, the environment in which she was uh, living had these clear expectations. So I think that you know, what we see today is that with this uh, increasing you know, schooling all over, parent expectations are also rising of what they will expect that their children will, will be able to do after school without having a very clear sense of what is involved along the way. And uh, uh, you know, to achieve the kind of universal enrollment that India has achieved, you know, 95 plus, I think it, over the last 20 years, parents, governments, communities, everybody understood what going to school means. But we are at the very early stages of what does learning effectively mean for the right level, which is the real thing that's going to convert into all of this. So I think a lot of hard work and simple thinking across many sectors it is needed if you want to build this momentum for learning. And I think that the, the issue that we see, uh, I mean we have success behind us. We, we didn't reach this level of schooling without this community uh, and parent support and government going along along the way. We have to learn how to do that for a new challenge which is learning.